Hello viewers. Today we will discuss LL1 parsing table. How to construct the LL1 parsing table? For example, you are given with this grammar. And if I construct the predictive parsing table by using this grammar, then what will be our predictive parsing table? <coughs> In the previous lecture, I have given all steps that are required to construct the predictive parsing table. Here, we will just skip some steps and uh, just uh, try to find out this table, parsing table, predictive parsing table for this grammar. Consider this one production E raised to E plus T. Now here I just want to find out, you know that this is A, here I am just giving the idea of the previous lecture and this is your alpha, find out first of alpha that means first of E plus T, that will be what first of E and how we can find first of E. If I find from this production E raised to E plus T, the first of E will be first of E only. That is obvious that always first of E will be equal to the first of E. Now if I use this production E raised to T, in that case I can write first of E equal to first of T. And uh, that means what? For finding first of E, I need first of T. We can find the first of T from this production, first of T equal to first of t, you can find out from here, that is obvious that always first of t will be equal to first of t. But by using this production t raised to f, you can find out first of t equal to first of f. And what is first of f? That is equal to it. So I can see in this case, or uh, in this grammar, first of e and equal to first of t equal to first of f equal to what? id. So you can see here, it is equal to first of e and what, what is our first of E? First of E is ID. That means I have to insert this production E raised to E plus T in the row E and column ID. Just go to here, E row and ID column, just insert here E raised to E plus T. Now consider the next production E raised to T. In this case I need first of T. What will be our first of t? As you know that first of t is also equal to id. So I have to insert this production e raised to t in the e row and id column. e row and id column. That means in the same cell I am entering here e raised to t. Now consider the next production t raised to t into f. Find out first of t into f. That is what? First of t first of t into f that is equal to first of t and it is equal to what id so i can enter this production t raised to t into f in the row t and id column t row and id column here i have to insert t raised to t into f next consider the production t raised to f t raised to f I need first of f. What is your first of f? That is equal to id. Equal to id. So I have to insert this production in the t row and id column. Here I have to insert t raised to f. And next production is f raised to id. f raised to id. Here I have to find out first of id. And what is your first of id? Is id. Id stands for identifier in this grammar id and now i have to insert this production f raised to id in the f row and id column f row and id column i have to insert here f raised to id this is our predictive parsing table for the given grammar this one now you can see in this predictive parsing table i am getting here multiple entries in this column or in this cell as well as in this cell that that means what it is non deterministic I am not able to decide that when I am getting in the stack E, top symbol in the stack E, and the input pointer is pointing ID, either I have to use E raised to E plus T or E raised to T. That is the problem. 
with this grammar. That means what if I am applying this grammar in the predictive uh, by using predictive parser, I am uh, just I just want to construct the predictive parsing table for this grammar. Uh, then we will get multiple entries in a row. Uh, sorry, in a cell. How this problem arises here? What is the reason? Just find out the reason. The reason is what? If I am getting the first of this one and first of this one as the same or suppose that there is a production A raised to alpha or beta and in that case if I am getting first of alpha and our first of alpha is suppose that first of alpha is suppose that A and B and first of beta is suppose that first of beta is a comma c if there is any thing common between first of alpha and first of beta then we will get multiple entries that means what it creates non determinism i am not able to determine that which production i have to use clear why i am getting this because this grammar is left recursive if the grammar is left recursive, you can see, if suppose that the grammar is uh, production is like this one, A raised to A alpha or beta. By using this production, if I just want to find out first of A alpha, that is equal to what? First of A. And here, first of A equal to, if I just want to find out first of A, by using this production, A raised to A alpha, what will be the first of A? First of A equal to first of A alpha equal to first of A alpha and that is equal to what? First of A. So first of A will always be equal to first of A. It is obvious that. Now I have to use this production A raised to beta. A raised to beta. If I just want to find out first of A from here, that will be equal to first of beta. And if I am getting some first of beta, that will be equivalent to first of A also. That will be equivalent to first of A. That means first of A alpha will contain also the values that are present in beta. First of beta. In first of beta. That means there will be a common between this one and this one. That's why if there is left recursion in the grammar, then we will get multiple entries in a cell in predictive passing table. Now another point is what? Suppose that uh, there is a production like this one. A raised to AB or AC. In that case also, if I just want to find out first of AB, that is what A. First of AC, that is what A. That means I am getting the same symbol here. Same symbol here. So that means we will get multiple defined entries or you can say multiple entries in a cell. For uh, That means A raised to AB and A raised to AC will be entered in the same cell. That is the problem. And what is this? What is this? This is left factoring or non-determinism because if I am getting A symbol as input, A symbol as input, then I am not able to decide that either I have to use AB or I have to use AC. That is non-determinism. That means what if your grammar contains non-determinism, in that case we are getting the multiple defined entries or multiple entries in a cell in predictive parsing table. This problem can be resolved by LL1 parsing table. That means what do we have to do? That means all such grammars that contain no multiple entries in the parsing table constitute a subset of CFG context free grammar called LL1 grammar. Called LL1 grammar. Therefore, a given grammar is LL1 if its parsing table constructed by predictive parsing table algorithm contains no multiple entries. For example, you are getting a grammar and you want to check that that grammar is LL1 or not. One way is what? Just construct the predictive parsing table for that grammar. If you are getting multiple entries in a cell in that parsing table, then you will say that that grammar is not LL1. But if you are not getting multiple entries in a cell, by using the predictive passing table algorithm, then you will say that that grammar is LL1. What is the meaning of LL1? 
In LM1, first L stands for left to right scanning of the input. Second L stands for left most derivation. And one is known as look ahead. What is the meaning of look ahead? Uh, you can see that indicates that the next input symbol, if the look ahead is one, that indicates that the next input symbol is used to decide the parsing process. If it is two, that means next two symbols are used to decide the next passing process. Conditions for a grammar to be allowable. Generally, you are getting some question in the gate, you know, that in gate exam. Uh, there is a grammar and they are asking that this grammar is relevant or not and like that you are getting the question in gate exam. How you will check that? Suppose that there is a production A rise to alpha or beta. Remember that it is written here for every pair of production. That means what? If the production is given like this A rise to alpha or beta or gamma or delta like that. Then for every pair of production, how many pair will be this uh, in this grammar? A rise to alpha beta, it can be that. Or it can be A rise to alpha gamma. Or it can be A rise to alpha delta. Or it can be A rise to beta gamma. Or it can be A rise to beta delta. Or it can be A rise to gamma delta. That means for every pair of productions, every pair of productions, you have to check that. What you have to check that? If first of alpha, first of alpha, intersection, this is intersection here, intersection first of beta equal to phi. That means there is no common between first of alpha and first of beta. Then that means what? We will not get any multiple entries. If it is phi, and if first of beta contain empty, that means what? Suppose that you are getting first of alpha, first of alpha as A, B, and first of beta as C and empty. You can see there is no common. But in that case, I am getting first of beta contain empty. If first of beta contain empty, then how I am performing, or you can say how I am inserting the production. If it contain empty, then I have to find out the follow of A. So what I have to check that? What I have to check that? First of alpha intersection follow of A must be equal to 5. That means if first of beta contain empty and first of alpha does not contain empty, then first of alpha intersection follow of A must be equal to phi. Then the grammar will be L1. Now, if suppose that first of alpha contain uh, first of alpha contain empty and first of beta does not contain empty, in that case what will be that? Follow of A intersection first of beta must be equal to phi. But if both contain empty. In that case, what will be the result? If both contain empty, then for both cases, I have to find out follow of A. If it also contain empty, in that case, I have to find out follow of A. In this case, also, I have to find out follow of A. That means follow of A intersection, follow of A will be equal to follow of A. If both contain empty, then the grammar will not be irrelevant. Is that clear? Now, no left recursive grammar can be L1. Remember that. If the grammar is left recursive, then the grammar cannot be L1. Test the grammar is L1 or not. What I have to do here? Consider every pair of production. This is one pair, second pair. First consider S derives to one A, B or empty. This is your alpha here. This one is beta. And this is your A. Now it becomes in the form A rise to alpha or beta. Find out first of alpha. That is what? First of alpha means first of one A, B. And it is equal to what? One. Next find out first of beta. First of beta is 
empty and that is equal to what empty just find out the intersection of this the intersection of this is phi but you can see here first of beta contain empty so what i have to do i have to check that first of alpha intersection follow of s is a phi or not what is our first of alpha that is 1 now find out follow of s what will be the follow of s you do, you do that in this case in this comma there is no s in the right side of any production so the follow of s will be by default that is what follow of s equal to dollar so 1 and dollar intersection of 1 and dollar that is also phi so this production follows the element rule this pair of production follows the element rule now consider this production a raised to 1 ac or 0c this is your alpha this is your beta this is your a now find out first of alpha that is first of 1 ac and it is equal to what 1 find out first of beta that is first of 0c and it is equal to what 0 there is no common between this and both of or uh, no element contain the empty so uh, this will be Equal, uh, first of alpha intersection first of beta is phi here so this also follow the ll1 rule so now i can say that this grammar is ll1 this grammar is ll1 now you can see there are uh, two ways to check that the grammar is ll1 or not one way is what just construct the predictive parsing table for this grammar and if there is no multiple entries in the any cell in that table then you will say that this grammar is ll1 now second way is what just apply these rules and check that the grammar is ll1 or not now if you are getting the question like this construct the ll1 parsing table for a grammar what do you have to do first you have to remove the left recursion from this given grammar then check that in the grammar left factoring is present or not just remove left factoring that means what i have to do if the grammar contain left recursion or left factoring the grammar cannot be ll1 so what i have to see in the grammar left factoring is non determinist non determinist non determinist that means what in the uh, if any grammar is given to you just remove the left recursion if it is present in the grammar after that just check that in the grammar there is uh, if there is left factoring just remove the left factoring If the left recursion and left factoring is not present in the grammar, then construct the predictive parsing table for that grammar. That is known as L1 parsing table. That means you can say the method for constructing the L1 parsing table is same as predictive parsing table, but there is a change in the grammar only. For example, you are getting this grammar, and your task is to construct the L1 parsing table. Now check this grammar contain left recursion or not. This. there cannot be left recursion this one also not and uh, here also there is no left recursion because this is c and this one is b in this case also there is no left recursion no left recursion now check left factoring there is no left factoring because this is b this one is empty this is g this one is empty f this one is empty now just construct the predictive parsing table for this grammar that will be L1 parsing table. Consider this production H derives to A, B, D, H. First of this one is what A. So where that entry will be in uh, that entry will perform the parsing table in S row and a small A column because first of A is first of A B D H is A. Just come here S row and A column. This one just insert here H derives to A B. D H. Next, consider the production B raised to C C. First of C C is what C small C. Then where I have to insert B row and a small C column. Just insert B raised to C C. B row small C column B raised to C C. Next, consider the production C raised to small B capital C. First of B C is what B. in the row c and b column just insert this production 
You can find out follow of C from here. Follow of C equal to follow of B. And from here you can find out follow of C. That will be what follow of C equal to follow of C. So this is obvious that follow of C will always be equal to follow of C. So I can find out the follow of C from here. What will be that? Follow of C equal to follow of B. And follow of B equal to first of DH. Follow of B equal to first of DH. Just find out first of DH. First of dh equal to first find out first of d. That is what first of d equal to first of e. Now I have to find out first of e first. Because first of d equal to first of e. First of d equal to first of e. And first of e. When I want to find out first of e, I have to find out first of e first. And first of e equal to you can see here first of e equal to what g comma empty. So first of e contain empty. What I have to write here first of e set difference empty union first of f. And this is equal to what first of e is what g comma empty set difference empty union first of f is what first of f will be f comma empty this is f comma empty so it will be what g f and empty this is our first of e or you can say first of d so here first of d contain empty so what i have to write here first of d set difference empty union first of h And that will be equal to what? G F empty set difference empty union first of H is H. And this is equal to G F and H. This is your first of D H. And first of D H. Why I am finding first of D H? Follow B is first of D H. So it is equal to follow B. It is equal to follow of B and you know that first follow of C is follow of B. So what will be follow of C? That is G F H. So where I have to insert this production C raised to empty in the C row and G F H column. Let's go to here C row and G F H column. That will be what C raised to empty F C raised to empty. And H C is to empty. Now consider the next production D is to E F. I have to find out first of E F. And what is our first of E F? That is G F empty. That is what G F and empty. This is what first of E F. So for G and F, I have to insert D is to E F. In the D row and G F column, D row and G F column just insert here D raised to E F, D raised to E F. For empty, just find out follow of D. What is your follow of D? Follow of D equal to first of H. Follow of D equal to first of H. That is H. That means in H column also I have to insert D raised to E F. Here, D raised to here. I think it is understandable to you. I am repeating one more time. First find out first of E F. First of E F is what? G F empty. This is G F empty. Then G column and F column just insert D raised to E F. D row D raised to E F in G F column. For empty you have to find out follow of D. Follow of D from the grammar is what? H. First of S that is H. That means in H row and D, sorry, in D row and H column, you have to insert D raised to E F. D raised to E F. Now consider the next production, E raised to G.
e raised to g i have to find out first of g that is what g e rho and g column you have to insert e raised to g e rho and g column is one you have to insert e raised to g then consider the production e raised to mt this is your alpha find out first of alpha that is first of mt if that contain only mt then you have to find out follow of e and what is your follow of e follow of e equal to first of f follow of e equal to first of f follow of e equal to first of f and you know that first of f contain empty because first of f is f comma empty so then what i have to do here set difference empty union follow of d follow of this one. and that is equal to what first of f is f comma empty set difference empty union follow of d is h follow of d is h so it will be f comma h this is your follow of e then e rho and f h column i have to insert e raised to empty e rho f h column f and h column I have to insert e raised to empty. Then consider next production. That is what Then consider the production f derives to small f. Find out first of f that is f only. So in the f row and a small f column, I have to insert f derives to f. F row and f this one. F derives to f. Then consider the next production that is what f derives to empty. First of empty is empty only. Then that means I have to find out follow of f. What is your follow of f? Follow of f equal to follow of d. Follow of f equal to follow of d, and follow of d is h. So our follow of f is equal to follow of d, and this is equal to h. So I have to insert this production in h column and f row. F derives to empty. H column and f row. F derives to now you can see in this parsing table, I have considered all the production. In this parsing table, there is no multiple defined entries or no multiple entries in any cell. So this grammar is LL1. And this parsing table is LL1 parsing table. This parsing table is LL1 parsing table. And the method for implementing this LL1 parsing table is same as predictive parsing table. Same as predictive parsing. Same as predictive parser. The method for implementation of LL1 parser is same as predictive parser. Now I would like to show you one thing here. Uh, just in this grammar, this is the grammar which I had taken previously. Here I have changed only after D I have written here G. You can see in this grammar there is no left recursion as well as left factoring. But is this grammar is L? Just check that. Just consider this process. E drives to G or MT. If I consider, if I just want to check that this production follow the rules of L1 or not. What I have to find out first of G. First of G is what? Equal to G. 
दैट मीन्स फर्स्ट ऑफ अल्फा इसे अल्फा दिस वन इज बीटा सो फर्स्ट ऑफ अल्फा इज जी नाउ आई टू फाइंड आउट फर्स्ट ऑफ बीटा दैट इज योर फर्स्ट ऑफ एम टी एंड इट इज इक्वल टू एम टी If I am checking that first of alpha and first of beta, there is no common between first of alpha and first of beta. But I have to check that because I have to find uh, apply one more rule because first of beta contains M T. What I have to find out? Follow of E. And you can see here follow of E equal to first. Uh, we can find out follow of E from this production that will be what D raised to E F. And if I find out first of E F, sorry, follow of first follow of E, follow of E, it is equal to what first of F, first of F. And what is our first of F? That is F comma empty. So our first of beta contains empty because this is beta, this one is B, and this one is A. It raises to alpha b beta alpha is empty. For finding the follow, this was the production which I had taken as example. It raises to alpha b beta. So follow of e equal to first of f, and first of f contains empty. So I have to write here the difference empty union follow of d, and that is equal to what f comma f comma empty. Set difference empty. Union follow D is what? Follow D is G here. So it will be G. And this is equal to what? F comma G. So I am getting here. If I apply the rule uh, first of alpha, that is first of G. Intersection follow of A, that is what? Follow of E. That is what basically this is follow of G is first of G is G intersection follow of E is F comma G and this is not equal to phi. This is not equal to phi. So what you can see here, if the grammar does not contain, no, uh, does not contain left factoring. Then we cannot say that the grammar is L1 or not. But it is sure that if the grammar is left recursive, then it will not be L1. And if the grammar contain left factoring, then it will not be L1. But I am not sure that if the grammar does not contain left factoring, then it will be L1 or not. That depend upon the grammar okay just remember these things that's why i have given this example to show that this grammar does not contain left factoring but this grammar is not l1 but you can see if any grammar contain left recursion then then it will not be l1 if the grammar is uh, then a grammar contains left factoring then it will not be l1 you can see that If there is a production like this one, e raised to g, and this empty is written like g f, then you will get here first of g, that is g. Here also you will get first of g f at first of, first of g f as g. Okay, so just uh, remember these things when you are finding the grammar is L one or not. Just check that by using applying these rules, the grammar is L one or not. First check that left recursion is present. If the left recursion is present, just say that this grammar is not relevant. If left factoring is present, then say that this grammar is not relevant. But if the question is that check uh, this grammar is relevant or not, then you have to apply these rules. Apply these rules to check that the grammar is relevant or not. Thank you thanks so much